Welcome to this module. While you're listening to the clip, please take notes as there will be a quiz to complete at the end of this module. Module 1, Dispersal Theory out of Africa. In this module, we'll discuss the out of Africa dispersal theory, the earliest human or modern human remains, the ocean crossing from Sunda archipelago across the Wallacea and through to Seoul, Sunda being Indonesia and Seoul being Australia. It starts in fact in Africa and is modelled on the dispersal theories of modern humans, which are bipedal humans or hominins just like you and I. The earliest records of modern day humans are found at southwestern Ethiopia, the Omo River, and these date up to 360,000 years ago. Until very recently, the earliest Homo sapien fossils found outside of Africa was only at about 120,000 years old. A recent discovery of a partially intact Homo sapien jawbone was found in Israel, and this has been dated between 194,000 and 177,000 years ago. This shows us that the out of Africa movements occurred much faster than we first thought. It is likely that the initial hominin dispersal was coastal. There would have been an abundance of food and creeks that flowed into the ocean, therefore giving the best chances of finding food and survival for larger groups that were moving along the coastlines. Over time there would have been multiple dispersal paths and as humans go we always find the most effective way to get from point A to point B. Therefore the route that they took through Sunda to Sahul land would have been streamlined and would have become faster. And something we need to remember is that it wasn't just one way. There was to and from. So people were taking information to and from their groups or their family groups. These modern humans were talking to each other just like we do today. Sunda and Seoul are the two shelves adjoining the Wallacea an island archipelago between Asia and Australia, and this marks the boundaries of the two world's largest biogeographic regions. There are many views on dispersal theory, although the evidence suggests that the first Australians entered Seoul from the northwest, and this was while there was another trajectory continuing to the north through to Papua New Guinea. From the Sunda and Sahul trajectories diverging, the expansion across the Pacific Islands on the northern side of what is now called Papua New Guinea and to the southward to what is now known as New Zealand occurred much later. So from now we're going to continue on to our journey from Sunda to Sahul land and consider one of the logical occupational pathways by our first Australians. The expansion across Sahul was considered to have been really, really quick, occurring in less than 2,000 years with one trail leading down the east coast of Australia to the south and the other going down the west coast of Australia to the south and both of these trajectories converging at around Eyre Peninsula. With some of the oldest skeletal evidence in Australia coming from Lake Mungo, this does pose the question of why do we have the oldest bone evidence at the far opposite of where the first Australians are believed to have landed? Now that's a good question. We must remember that the sea level then was much lower. Sahul was a major continent that included Papua New Guinea and the shoreline that extended well beyond of what it does today. What this means is the evidence left behind then, 50,000 years ago, today is well underwater and no longer exists. It is likely that the evidence could have pushed well beyond 65,000 years ago, but this is now speculation. Let's have a look at this Google Earth map of Australia and you can see the coastline and how it looked. On this Google satellite image it is clear the distance from Australia's existing coastline and the Seoul coastline has decreased by nearly 400 kilometres. I've marked the location to where a possible entry point to Australia was likely. It is important to note that although the sea level was much lower the migration to Australia did not include sight of the mainland although those that were travelling here would have seen or observed smoke, birds in flight to and from Sunda and Sahul lands. So this would have given them some confidence to travel through to Sahul land. In summary, in this module, we learnt that the oldest modern human bones are found in Africa, along the Omo River. When the first Australians came to Sahul, it was likely along the Sunda archipelago, crossing the Wallacea. And this was sometime between 65,000 years ago and 50,000 years ago. And although it is plausible 
that arrival could have been earlier than this. All this evidence in the area that it could be is underwater and it's unlikely that we will find any.